Hey, cheese spot. Oh, I got you now. Oh, yes. Who's this? Who's this? Is this my co-host? She's like, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing, Chispa? So, Chispa, what did you think of that go-home show of Monday Night Raw? What was that? I mean, those aren't good sounds coming from you. You okay? So, 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 so tell me, what did you think about Monday Night Raw? Hmm? Oh, ha! That's what you thought about Monday Night Raw? That sounds about right. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one... Wow, this this room looks like it's for bright for a change. It's weird. Oh, I did fix the light bulb. And I've been fiddling with my computer screen way too much. That's okay. Hello, folks. You just saw the hobo cat. She's actually, you can see, I think, part of her tail. As she kind of scoots out of there. Or is that the rug? No, she's kind of that blind spot. I'm the one, the only, I am a Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw. And I was a couple, as always, as per my usual cost, custom, with my nice wrestling t-shirt on, I think I will be getting one more wrestling t-shirt. And I think eventually I have to get one for my sister. But that's okay, that's a gift. This girl with a shiny wizard shirt. And I think I might pick up a Young Buck shirt, only because I think have two two purple actually i do have a pretty good color arrangement so far i have like three black t-shirts like just black and white gray and black mustard and brown heather purple and white Ooh, that reminds me i have to get that shirt i have to, I have to find that freaking shirt I hate it I know it's here in the house somewhere. But, again, as always, as for my other tradition, besides wearing wrestling t-shirts when I talk about wrestling, let's give some shout-outs. Michael, Michael, Michael. You, sir. Because you put your name down three times. You only got three two counts, which gives you one six count.
Royal Smack. I haven't heard from you. That's pretty cool. I was like interacting with new people. You, sir, are definitely a master. The air guitar. And Boren, Corin, man, I just want to listen to my briefcase boombox, man. And again, if you would like your own little shout out, you can do it one of a couple of ways. One, you can leave a comment. Two, you can also chat with me in Discord. If you chat with me in Discord enough, um, you, or if you chat before, if you, if you get enough rewards enough, you actually do get bumped up into the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League. Um, you can also email, although I haven't checked my email in a while. I really should check my email more frequently than I should. But that's neither here nor there, because generally it's just bad news saying how I've been copyrighted, like either finger wagged at or, or, or copyright. Right songs, that's okay. Well, let's talk about some WWE then. Towards the end of the video, I'll get into a little bit of how the week is going to go. And I do want to get this done fairly quick because I have to go out and hobo. I need my aluminum cans. So the price of aluminum has been dropping for some reason. Need more. So it starts off with Dolph, comes out on the MVP lounge. Then, of course, Drew McIntyre interrupts that. Drew McIntyre, he's a hell of a punch. Because in one shot, he dropped poor Dolph Ziggler. Then, eight, then we go backstage. Angel Garza and Andrade is there with Zelina Vega. Ah, uh, Garza. Garza just stares at Charlie's tits, dude. So wrong on so many levels. You have to be aware of HR. I think even Jim Cornette said, like, the most powerful group of individuals nowadays run... Or, or is in the human HR or in the is in the HR section of any corporation. They have like ultimate power. Uh, then Vega goes like all catty because obviously Garza is just like already like immensely making out with Charlie, and Charlie is just like all wet. Yeah, I can still say that. And he has the flower ready to give Charlie. But Selena Vega goes, goes all cat here. Oh. Then the Viking Raiders show up, and Ivar takes the rose from Angel Garza, and he gives it to Charlie. Ivar is quite the stud, folks. This leads us to our first match. It was the Viking Raiders taking on Angel Garza and Andrade with Selena Vega. Selena Vega, this time her outfit, kind of no descript, kind of single-piece jumpsuit. I think she is worn. I forgot if she's wore this one before, but she has a couple like it. Um, get a fast start. Garza and Andrade start out fast with the shirts on. This is actually an elimination match. And with this, there's actually implications for like a future number one title shot. They've done this a couple times. Mm, it, it's okay. Um, Again, then the Viking Raiders get the upper hand. Angel Garza transitions, takes the pants off, but the shirt stays on. Interesting. 
Uh, then we go to break and a big knee by Eric. If it wasn't for that leg slap, I swear that's that actually looks like it legitimately hurts. When you're when you're going face down and knees coming up, that's generally a knockout move, like cold, like tw foot twitching knockout. Ivar also gets in. He's always used as a weapon. That's always fun to see. Uh, Eric missed the knee. Uh, gets it's stuck in something. And then Eric's the first one eliminated. Oh my my. Now with Eric on, the shirts come off. Uh, Ivar does his big dive after the two of them kind of fist bump each other. Andrade he had a kick. He had a, he had a pretty big kick. That cost him. Then he ate the pin. So now Andrade's up. So that leaves probably the biggest guy and the smallest guy. Well, Andrade does do a lot of help. Um, Garza, then it's Garza and, and Ivar go at each other. Andrade is smart. Um, there was a pin attempt by Ivar onto Garza. Andrade was smartly enough put his partner's foot on the rope. They fist bump. They're on the same page. They know what they're doing finally. Again, after that stern tongue lashing by Randy Orton. Randy Orton tells you what to do with that with his hand around your neck. You're probably going to do it. Even for a couple more weeks. Uh, Garza then caught Ivar. Ivar was going to come off the rope. And then caught him in a powerbomb. I was shocked because I'm like, wait a second. Ivar is one big dude. I was going to get caught in the wing clipper. But he lost via powerbomb. Mainly due to Ivar's own momentum bringing him down. This is actually a pretty good match. Uh, the fact that it was an elimination match, eh, I don't know, didn't do it for me. Still, it's a pretty good quality cheeseburger match. And Sarah Schreiber is back there with Ruby Riot and the Iconics show up. And uh, they say, But Ruby, you have no friends. Oh, there's, there's no one to share a, a Foster's with or, 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 or for someone to kick you up a shrimp on the barbie. And other insulting things that they say. Then Bianca Belair shows up. Whoa, Bianca Belair is back. That's good. Oh, yeah, eventually one day you're going to see some changes to the office area. Um, I need more bookshelf space. So eventually, I don't even know where I'm going to put that one. I'll find some. Actually, I know what I can do. Yeah, eventually I have to get one, two, three, four. So yeah, eventually one of those bookshelves. It's going to look rearranged eventually sometime. I don't know where that one's going. That's that's a whole other issue. I have space. It actually wouldn't be that bad there either. I think it almost fits. Or I could... Uh, yeah, I shouldn't be doing this now. But yeah, I, I can finagle stuff around though. Again, something for another time. I just get easily distracted. It was it was a pretty nappy day for me. So the Iconics and Ruby Riot, Bianca Bel like Iconics and Ruby Riot with Bianca Belair. Uh Ruby Riot and Peyton Royce start off. Quick start the match. Um Ruby goes after Peyton. Peyton eventually counters it. There were three roll ups pretty quick. Then the standing STL by Ruby Riot. Uh, Bel Air gets the blind tag. Oh, Billy Kay gets the blind tag. The big boot. That's a pretty good big boot that that Billy Kay has. She she has some heft behind that. She has a booty to behind that boot. I like that phrase. A booty behind the boot. Uh, Bianca gets the hot tag. Uh, she starts clearing a house. The driving spear into Billy Kay. The squat. Body slam and all four get in the ring. Then there was a kiss of death. That's impressive. It's like a like a GTS driver where she picks her up in kind of the burning hammer position. Or picks her up in like the traditional GTS position, torture rack, and flips her all the way over. So that's pretty cool. It's good to see. Um this was a short I think my only thing, this is a short match. They started to do something different, and I'll I'll get into that. Uh this match that was a ham sandwich. Then we had R Truth backstage. <laughs> he calls Ricochet <laughs> Richard or Ricardo, something like that. 
confronts Tazawa. Tazawa tries to roll him up. Now we're gonna fit, we're gonna do this in the ring. Yeah, that that segment is what it was, and will always be that. Uh, but our truth, Tazawa, uh, they face off. Shayna Baszler shows up. Part of me, I'm of one of, I'm of one of three thought. I, I wanted three. One of three things was going to happen. Of course, one of those things did happen. One, Shayna Baszler takes out our truth. She becomes twenty four seven champion. I'd kind of be okay with that. Because I want to know the guy that would try to jump Shayna Baszler. That would be interesting. Two, she just beats up everyone. And then leaves. Three, she just cuts a p- average promo and that's the end of that. Guess what? It was the third one. Uh, Tazawa and our true square off. Shayna Baszler comes in. Zawa sends ninjas after Shayna. That's terrible. This is how you treat Shayna Baszler. Although Shayna Baszler is looking very Brooklyn brawlerish, though. If she was a guy, she'd probably have some scruff, have mussed up hair, and have a cigar in her mouth. That's what she was. She was missing a cigar in her mouth. That would have been funny. Yeah, Shayna Baszler comes out, her like. Shane and Baszler merchandise shirts all ripped up. She just looks haggard. She looks like a female Brooklyn bra- brawler without the cigar. Well, there was a flash of my cat. I know, I think when I was feeding the birds, one of those big black buzzy flies got in the house because I heard it for a while. It's probably off chasing that. It keeps her occupied. And then Shane goes on the mic. She could use still a little more work on her promos. I wanted to see her get the 24-7 belt. Because remember the last, unfortunately the last image I have of Shayna Baszler is her biting the neck of Becky Lynch. Not necessarily the image you want to go out on. And there's a bunch of recaps, the Rey Mysterio recap, uh, Seth and Murphy on their back, and Murphy's like, dude, I don't want to lose in a high. I'm terrified. You know what? You're right. I wouldn't want to lose an eye either. I want to see how all this nonsense nonsense is done come the horror show at Extreme Rules. Because either Ray is losing his eye and he's he's leaving. Or Seth loses an eye. Where's like an eye patch for a while? But then, like, a couple of weeks later, they say, well, yeah, you had it. Like, they would have to do some kind of finish where, where Ray literally pops it out CG-wise. It's still connected via the optic nerve and blood vessels, because I, I know Vader actually did get his... A couple of wrestlers have gotten their eyes popped out, and they like, Vader literally, like, pushed his eye back in his head. Physiologically, I know it's possible. I don't think he lost any vision. It's, it's probably not the most pleasant experience. But they could have Ray take out the eye of Seth unless he like squishes it and all like the virtual uh, vitreous comes comes oozing out. Or if he just like pops out and you see it like just dangle there like like Saw movie. Which, which gave me like nightmares for a week only because I was dating a Chinese girl. That's all. I just saw her face with, with, with an eye hanging out all burnt up. So that like that like legit like freaked me out. I'm like, I'm never watching a movie with you, dude. Nor am I drinking and watching a movie with you. Not happening. But so unless they unless it like pops out and the referee says, Oh, that's out of its socket, match over. Um Seth pops it back in and wears an eye patch for a couple of weeks. And they show him going to, like, a specialized eye doctor. I don't see how that's going to end. That's, I'm already not looking forward to that match. So with that, uh, Seth came, went to commercial. Seth comes out, gives the promo. God, I don't even think the enhancement talent were, like, falling asleep. They're like, dude, do we really have to boo this? 
This is bad. Uh, Kevin Owens comes out. Yes, 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 yes. Saves today. He's so much better at this than Seth is. And then, they, then he comes out. And then it's um, next match is going to be Murphy and Aleister Black with Seth and KO around the corners. Uh, Murphy works over the legs of Aleister Black, the Dragon School through leg whip and, and through through the ropes. That's always that always looks vicious. Because at least with a dragon screw in the ring, you can like bounce up and, and go with it. And the ropes, you're stuck. Those ropes really don't gl- don't give either. Uh, Black, he tried to lift up. He started. He did his striking on some Murphy. He tried to lift him with a leg. It's called an ankle lock. Murphy worked over Black a little leg. I think eventually uh, Seth Rollins got involved, and we are filled the best to finish, baby. Because this was. Actually, pretty good until like the shenanigans happened. Eh. It was a ham sandwich. Okay, that wasn't even a match. I'm not even worried about that. But then uh, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens had a match. Semi lumberjack because around ringside. You had Aleister Black, Rey Mysterio, and Dominic Mysterio on ringside. Uh, this match was really strike heavy. Uh, Seth, the, the cowardly heel. Mercy, Kevin. Show me mercy. You shall have no mercy. In fact, I'll stomp on you some more. You could tell they were telling each other the spots. This seemed like a very impromptu match. A lot of spot telling. You can tell. Like, like when, when Seth. See, when you see the mouth moving. Kevin Owens literally puts like his like you can always that's the only thing you can always tell. You don't know what the spot is, but you can tell the spot telling because Kevin Owens will have a guy in the headlock. I am the master of the headlock. Yeah, I am still the master of the headlock. So it's kind of obvious that way. There's a lot. Uh, AJ Styles is so smooth about it. Again, Kevin Owens doesn't have the hair. Seth, Seth is just Seth. Um, spot talking. Seth's so bad at that. Then the cannonball he gets caught in the cannonball. And probably the first wrestling move actually happened besides the cannonball. Like halfway into the match with a snapmare, <laughs> into some more kicks. Then Rollins tries to escape. He would get cornered, of course, by everyone back in the ring. Then there's Canadian headbutt. Again, the third most devastating headbutt is the Canadian headbutt for some reason. Uh, Seth eventually beats up Owens, shoves him into the glass. <whistles> Boarding! Two-minute minor on Seth Rollins. Uh, KO does a gut kick. To Rollins. Rollins does a great sell of a spike DDT from that much. So, of course, it's a blockbuster. And there was no stomp. There was no stunner for a while. Uh, Seth goes uh, after the eyes. Eventually, there is the kick to the gut, the stunner. After everyone kind of spooks Rollins into Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens wins. Eh. It was a cheeseburger match. I think Seth does get something that exciting. And a little segment there with Ric Flair and the Big Show. And we have a Randy Orton retrospective and promo, so that's good. So let's see if I can get this done in seven minutes. I can get it worked on. Then we have R-Truth versus Randy Orton. Orton, Orton just goes after R-Truth. R-Truth is it's like, no, no, no. Right, let me talk to Rick. So as soon as he turns his back, R, it seems R-Truth baited him. He got lucky. Our truth one for the scissors kick not happening. RKO. That was it. That was the match. Uh, Orton even didn't care about the title because he just like left him there. He was gonna punt our truth, but then the Big Show came, came out, stopped that. They're gonna have a match, not the pay for you, which is weird, but on Monday Night Raw. So I wonder if they're setting something up for a September Slam because there have been weird rumors. Oh, wait, this match was a can of soup. It's 
So there have been rumors that there's going to be no SummerSlam. They might have uh, Revolution, Women's Revolution Part 2. They still don't know what they're doing. Um, when I, The very few clips I saw of the New Japan kind of New Japan Dominion highlights because Evil turned on Lij Los Ingonobales de Japan. He's now too sweet and Bullet Club for life. I don't see what kind of cool entrance they give him. Bullet Club entrance. Bullet Club members get cool entrances. Cause I'm kind of hooked on the El Fantasma one right now. But. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, um, in Japan for new Di for Dominion, it was like half capacity. I think like literally there was like a seat between everyone. It was fifty percent capacity. They skipped every seat, and they even had like instructions. It's like please don't shout or yell. If you like something, clap. That's not going to go over well in the States, not for pro wrestling. But that's what, again, Japanese crowds are very respectful, as we call them in the Discord group. Then we had Bobby Lashley and MVP. Uh, they were talking with Cedric and, and Ricochet. Cher Schreiber shows up. And of course, he's like, hey, hey, newsman, dude, look at this. Here's Drew. Let's go interview him. That makes sense. So, so you have one person going from inter interview to interview. Much more organic than it's been in the past. So that's good to see. Then Drew McIntyre, he like tosses Dolph into the practice ring. That was funny. Then the next match was Bobby Lashley versus Ricochet. This was actually pretty good. Ricochet starts fast. Um, he tries to go after Bobby. Bobby just kind of like eats it and he just looks annoyed. It's like, why? Why are you even trying? Yeah, you can just barely see my cat, I think. So I can see her tail because she's flopped in front of the, like, the door. Uh, Ricochet gets tossed into the barricade because I'm the barricade. I'm the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cachoo. From there, Bobby Spears into the corner. He does the second one, of course. Kind of, he doesn't post himself all the way, but you know what happens. It was a, there was no roll up for Ricochet. Bobby Lashley picked him up by his ears between his legs. He tried flying. He got caught into the Dominator. That was pretty good. Bobby Lashley, he has a vicious-looking snap suplex, too. Uh, he had a... Ricochet tried a, tried a really sh shoddy-looking shooting star on, like, Bobby Lashley's knees. That did not look good. That looked botchy. He also tried the 6, 630. He saw him landing on his feet, though. I can't... I, I still can't fathom... I, I understand the moonsault. I understand at least the concept of a shooting star press. Once you start getting into like, like triple digit flips, and I know like a moonsault is technically a 180, but once you start going to like 360, 540, 360, it's like, how? If I tried that, I'd either over rotate or under rotate. Now is that fly again? And I'd like fall on my head and kill myself, which would not be pretty. But then Ricochet went for the lethal injection, but no, he got caught into the full Nelson. That's the end of that match. It was a good match, though. So, so with this idea of a retrospective, they're giving you a little bit of background. It's... I understand the reason for it. It's a little time filler. But again, it's fairly informative, though. So I'm okay with that. They're going to do this... Especially for like the the more well known wrestlers, uh, try and get them across more, give them a little bit more of their store backstory. I'm okay with that. So then we had uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks taking on the Kabuki Warriors for the belt. I don't know. Is it just me, or is Sasha Banks looking extra bronze recently? And then she also went all like Matt. Matt Balding Buck. Because she had like this weird headband that said boss on her head and it just it just did not look flattering. I'll say that. Yep. Yeah. She's chasing a bug. Again, it's just 
it's not dirty bugs. They just get in. And it's Florida. There's so many bugs. Here, anyway, one black fly comes in. Probably when I was feeding the birds. And I probably had the garage door open and the house door open at the same time. Or or when I checked the mail, probably just came in right there when I went to check the mail. That reminds me, I need to do those two things tomorrow. Or tonight. Ooh. Then, um, so Bailey and Banks, they jump uh, Kabuki Warriors. However, that backfires. Kairi Singh, they beat up Asuka for a little bit. Kairi Singh has a hot tag. Hot tag, the running blockbuster, takes out Sasha Banks. The double team. Then she did. Then she was in the ring. She did the double spear, the double Japanese arm drag, which is still probably the, the least used move, only because, like, I know what the Mexican arm drag is. That's, that's when you grab it, roll, and toss them. The Japanese arm drag is a standing one. You kind of underhook their arm and, like, do a flip motion so that, so that both of you are like this, you hit them, and then you go like flippy. It's kind of hard to illustrate, but if you think about like like side to side, um, I'm facing this way, the other person's facing this way. Whoop! Back flip. Again, Japanese arm drags look. They're just underutilized. I, haven't seen, I think I'm always shocked when I see them. So few people do them nowadays. El Generico used to do them with pretty good frequency. Uh, again, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat used to do it pretty frequently who else every so often on the independence El Phantasma I've seen do it Finn Balor I think when he was in New Japan did it AJ Styles anyone in Shikara probably the first thing they teach you is a Japanese arm drag second thing they teach well actually it's probably the second thing they teach you first thing is the American the Mexican arm drag second thing is the Japanese arm drag because they just do flippy stuff anyway Let's see if I can get this done before midnight. Or get this start processing before midnight now. Um, so with that, then the Kabuki Warriors hit the double double hip attack. Uh, Bailey and Banks catapult. And that looked vicious. Kyrie and Kyrie into the into the boards. <laughs> Two minute minor boarding. Again, uh, Kyrie tries to make the tag. Oscar eventually takes out both. Sasha Banks and Bailey. Asuka got yanked off the off the top turn buckle when she tried to climb it, and her like upper chest throat region like legit. I, I don't even think it was that. I think her head hit the top rope, and then got nailed by Meteora. Asuka put on the Asuka lock, but that wasn't enough. Bailey comes in to break that up, and then I don't know what Sasha Banks was thinking. But Asuka tagged in Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane started to go up to the top rope for the insane elbow. Sasha Banks, as as Kyrie Sane's flying through the air, decided to sit up. Now, for the macho elbow is what it is. You just want to lay flat so that way the person can say, oh, well, all, all, all I have to do is land next to you. My... My tricep gently flops against your chest, and then you're all good. Sasha Banks is going to get herself concussed again. I can't say she's not a safe worker. She's not safe for herself, though. Because that looked nasty. Again, she just... I don't know. It's, it's something timing-wise, something doesn't click. That's the only. That's the only way I can explain. I, I don't. I don't know what to say otherwise. It's just you don't. I know for a big. Unless you thought it was a big splash, because then you naturally want to sit up, so that way you can take it. You put your arms across your midsection. I know you can't see it, and then you kind of bump on your arms, and then as they fall, you fall with them. So you kind of tra you travel a bit. You alleviate all, all, all the all the stuff. You ever seen they always curl up and then they all of a sudden go flat once they're hit, unless they, unless it's um, El Phantasmo's like like dive thing because I don't you, you know you can do that. Even then, when he did that, the one guy that was coming up like like saw him like oh I better flatten out. I can't say Sh Sasha Banks is is unsafe because she does always protect others. She just doesn't protect herself. 
And then eventually she hits the bank statement onto Kyrie Sane after Asuka gets entangled with Bailey on the outside. Kyrie Sane taps out. It'll be interesting to see if we see Kyrie Sane ever again. Uh, this, for the most part, it was actually a pretty good match. It was a cheeseburger match. And that was Raw. Much better than SmackDown. That's not saying much. Oh, there's a cat. I'll say, eh. Overall, it was a cheeseburger Raw. Really hard to screw up some of the stuff they do. As far as the rest of the week, tomorrow, remember, folks, tomorrow, uh, Impact Wrestling changed their schedule time. It's from 9 to 11. I'll be here 9 o'clock live streaming for you guys. Wednesday, it's just a review of AEW. That's going to be Fight for the Fallen. So I'll have a little special graphic up there. I might have a little s special snack because it's a little bit different. Oh, tomorrow's not soup day because I have to do my grocery shopping. I like to treat myself after I do my grocery shopping. Something a little bit different. Fight for the Fallen again. Something a little special for me. Special, special. Thursday, might have both. El Vagabundo and Hijo del Hobo. Dos. Show up to give one prediction. So he'll probably predict Slammiversary. And we'll have the illustrious Dr. Tom, I hope, show up to do his predictions for the horror show at Extreme Rules. That's a mouthful. Friday's a normal SmackDown. Saturday, it's going to be Slammiversary. Sunday, uh, the horror show of Extreme Rules. Kind of regular week. I'll be off that Thursday then. That's Saturday and Sunday too. And that was it. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching.